Hi, everybody. Sorry, it's a little loud. Um, welcome to 2016 Media Day for our men's and women's basketball teams. I'm just going to run down how things are going to go, and then we're going to get started and um, hope it's a great day. So we're first going to hear from um, our athletic director, Josh Moon, and then we're going to move to the women's basketball team first with uh, Coach Fredrickson and a couple of the players. And after that, we'll move over to our men's basketball team with uh, Coach Sather and some of the players as well. And in the mix, we'll open it up for questions for any of you that are um, here wondering about Wolves basketball. We're really excited for the season to start. The women actually open at home next Wednesday against Concordia Moorhead, and then the men will be at home in two Tuesdays, I believe. It's November 15th against Southwest Minnesota State in a non-conference game. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce Josh Moon. Great. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us in the Royal Order of the Gyps team room, which we're very excited about. The Gyps named this last year, so we have these type of events in here. Excited for what they've done for Northern. So the, before we get into basketball, we're going to talk a little bit about the fall, and we're excited uh, what's been going on in the fall with our football program, with volleyball, and soccer. We have Coach Kim in here. Soccer just got done with the NSIC tournament. He was in here, but they just qualified for the tournament first time since 2009. So great steps forward with, with the soccer program. And this weekend we have volleyball Friday and Saturday night and football on Saturday. And we have swimming tonight at 5.30. So swimming's been really, really excited where that program is going as well. They've, they've taken some big steps the last couple of years and becoming more of a national program. So if you get a chance, go down to swimming tonight at the Y at 5.30 p.m. So lots of great things with the fall sports. We wrap up and get into basketball in the winter sports season. And the great thing about both basketball teams is they're great in the classroom. The women basketball GPA was 3.693 last year, which is phenomenal. Way better than men. The men had 3.376, so you guys are pretty good. That actually led the department for, for the men's teams. So congratulations to both our teams on that. That's just a phenomenal effort in the classroom. Yeah, that's a round of applause for that. So. Our basketball programs do a great job in the classroom and in the community. They've been involved with reading to, to kids in schools and community service functions throughout the year and just been a great advocate for Northern State University and they'll probably talk about that as um, some of them have, haven't, have not, um, they're not from this area so coming here not knowing much about Northern and getting embedded in this community and how awesome it is for, for especially for basketball is uh, definitely special for Northern State University. So we're going to bring up Coach Fred here first and talk a little bit. Coach Fred is knocking on the door of 800 wins. So he's got 796 right now. And we've talked about this with our student athletes. The women's basketball team has, has really set the tone for our department in terms of where we want to go athletically. You know, they've been the, the model of, of, of excellence here, of, of getting to the NCAA tournament the last three years and getting right in the mix of the uh, overall conference tournament, which we haven't had here in a long time. So. Uh, we're really excited with women's basketball, what they're doing, and Coach Fred's leadership. Coach Kruger has done a great job in her two years here, expanding our recruiting base and getting some, you know, some high-quality recruits in here as well. So Coach Fred is, like I just said, coming off their third straight NCAA tournament appearance, three straight NSIC North Division championships. He's in his 38th season here, crew record of 796 wins and 293 losses. Four-time NSIC Coach of the Year, two-time national champion, Let's bring up Coach Fredrickson. I'm going to uh, reserve my comments until my players get done talking here a little bit. Uh, I just want to introduce a couple of my coaches, uh, Paula Kruger, my assistant coach, Dakota Berry, Dakota Stand Up. She's our new GA from uh, Black Hill State, she played at a couple years ago. She's got some relatives down in the Tulare area. So um, those are the two coaches helping us. Um, I usually have my seniors speak, and which we'll do that today, but I want to introduce one of our players. Jill, you want to stand up, please? Um, this is Jill Conrad. She's a junior, and uh, the reason she's here is because she's been picked by our coaches in our league as the preseason player of the year in the North. And uh, as a junior, she was our only all-conference player last year, so the pressure's on her shoulders, and if anybody can handle it, she can. And uh, so she'll be playing the four position for us, as she did last year, and, and uh, really extends the defense and really uh, makes it a little bit easier for our centers to get the basketballs. 
I'm going to introduce our seniors by alphabetical order. They'll say a few words, and, uh, and then I'll finish up with things. Uh, our first speaker of the morning is going to be Jess Anderson. Come on up, Jess. Um, Jess is a 6'1 center from Fargo, North Dakota. And Jess is one of those people that's really persevered through our program. Um, she knows her role on our basketball team. She's gotten a little bit better every year. And uh, this year she's actually making some free throws in practice, so that's really been a positive. And, uh, but she's a senior. She's kind of worked her way up the ranks. And she will back up Miranda Ristow uh, with a few other people at the center position. So Jess Anderson. Um, for our season, for the outlook, we're hoping everything's going well. We have Alexis that's gotten hurt so far, but hopefully everyone else is healthy. And for our team, we're looking to win the North again for the fourth year in a row and also go back down to Sioux Falls and hopefully win a conference championship again this year. And then for individual outlook, like Coach said, hopefully get some backup minutes for Miranda and the other posts and just do my role and get rebounds and make layups. Every layup matters, like Coach Kruger says. What's your major, Jess? What do you want to do? Oh, my major is human performance and fitness, and I'm hoping to go to OT school, occupational therapy. Okay. Thanks, Jess. <laughs> Next senior, Bethany Crossway. Bethany's a senior from Spearfish, South Dakota. Um, her dad's a dentist, and uh, same thing, Bethany's been in our program for four years. Uh, worked her way up the ranks a little bit, played quite a bit of varsity basketball last year, and right now Bethany will play the two and the three positions for us. Like you said, I'm Bethany Crossway, and I'm looking forward to this year and as a team to strive like we have in the past. And I think as us seniors, we like to make it back to the regional tournament for the fourth year in the role, year in a row. That'd be pretty awesome and obviously win the North Conference and look to get a conference championship. Individually, I just want to do my part on the team. I mean, we have lots of plays and you know your role and yeah. And I'm a bio major, love bio and up in the air about what I want to do for sure. But. All right, thanks. Sir. <laughs> Next senior, Alexis Taffy on a bike. Alexis has got a little different perspective on things, and she'll let you know kind of what happened with her. Um, I'm Alexis Taffy. I'm from Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. I'm currently a senior slash red, redshirt junior officially. Um, I'm the, a small forward three position. Um, as of right now, my season is over, so I'm redshirting. Um, team and individual expectations this year. I just want to be like a good role model for everyone. Like since I'm still a captain, so be at every practice, be cheering, like I'm running all the clocks and everything. So I still get to be a part of the team. Um, I still hope like the girls make a conference championship run, make it to the NCAA tournament since I've been here. Like I've gone all three years so far, so going a fourth year would be awesome but I just know my role on the team this year and I hope I can come back stronger than ever next year. Uh, Lexus hurt her foot in practice. We were doing a basketball drill, defense, offense. The offensive, defensive player knocked the ball away from her. She took one big step to go get the basketball and at that point in time, the basketball rolled right underneath her foot and her foot came down right on top of the basketball square, and she broke the little bone above the ankle bone. And uh, so that kind of ended things in a hurry. But she probably knows our offense just about as well as I do. And uh, usually if I have any questions about what's going on on the floor, I ask her and she tells me. So she's down with our freshmen a lot, helping them out, letting them know where they're supposed to be and, and some of those things. and and. Uh, She's thinking about making an academic change in her major to allow her to come back next year and, and uh, play her fifth year and be able to use that eligibility up and then maybe go into the coaching area. So uh, that's Alexis's bio. This is Paige Wittachik. Uh Paige is a senior for us from Lino Lakes, Minnesota. Lino, Lino Lakes. Lino. <laughs> and uh, she'll tell you a little bit about her situation. 
So, like you said, I'm Paige. Um, I'm a senior this year, business marketing. I just want to get hired. That is my only goal. Um, this year I'm playing forward, filling Wex, her position a little bit, which she's helping me a ton. She's a dictionary and encyclopedia for plays. So that is very helpful. This season is looking optimistic. We just gotta stay focused. There's a lot of games, so keep the eye on the prize. Um, individually, I just need to be a good role, role player this year. Focus on rebounding for the first time in three years. So that's big for me. But yeah, I'm excited. One last go. Major. I already said it. Business marketing, once again. <laughs> what? Just get hired. Just get hired. Yep, already. Yep. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>
Miranda Ristow will be a senior, and Jill will be a senior. So that's going to be a pretty good group of seniors coming back on next year's team. Um, as far as our schedule is concerned, we, uh, we play exhibition game against the Division Three school next Wednesday night here by ourselves at 7. And then on the 15th, we have an interesting double hitter here with the men. Uh, we play Black Hill State at 6 o'clock, and they play Southwest State at 8. And uh, Black Hill State is a team that we barely beat last year out in Black Hills. has gotten better every year. Um, and we also, it was kind of a funny thing because there was two teams in a tournament in Billings that we were set to play. One of them backed out at the last minute, and the only team the coach from Billings could find was Black Hills State. So we're not only playing Black Hills State here on Tuesday, but we're playing them out in Billings, Montana on Friday or Saturday. And we're also playing Montana State Billings at the, on the same trip. And then we slide down south and uh, pick up Kearney on the way home on Monday. So that'll be a tough, tough three-game stretch for us against three Division II schools in four days. And then we start conference play with Moorhead. And uh, so, again, we're looking forward to the season. Uh, we won 23 games last year. Hopefully we can do as well, if not better. And, uh, you know, keep our people healthy and, and, uh, and go from there. Anybody have any questions for me? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Coach Fred. Appreciate it. And thank you. Nobody calls out Lionel Lakes. And that's a right. It's a big deal. You got to get it right. That's important. We're going to move on to men's basketball now. And Coach Taylor's going to come up and introduce a couple of his seniors here. Similar situation here with uh, another senior. The coach will talk about who's going to be redshirting this year. Um, coach is in his seventh season overall at NSU. 104 wins at the NSU. They had an NCAA tournament appearance in 2014-15, and they'll probably talk about how they want to build on that and build on last year's 18-win season. Uh, big things for this program this year. Coach Sather. On the very top of my sheet here, I've got to introduce my wife, Kelsey. Uh, Kelsey's here. She is now principal over at the primary school, so she gets off during the day a little bit to come over. Where when she's teaching, she couldn't make that. So, welcome. Thanks for coming. Um, anytime you're a coach, you understand how important uh, that part of life is, and, and she's always helped out a ton. But anyhow, I've got some, some guys I want to introduce, and they're going to kind of the same format we did with the women's team. We're going to have uh, uh, our guys speak. But in the, in the back, I've got our staff. Sundance Wicks is back here for his first year back as an assistant. He played here, was a GA here, and now he's back as a full-time assistant. So yeah, welcome, welcome back, Sonny. Really, really working with him on energy, uh, lacks energy, enthusiasm, uh, and so we're trying to do our best to get him a little more outspoken. Uh, but I, if you know him, that's usually not a problem. Uh, another new staff member we have, Zach Horseman. Zach joins us from South Dakota State, um, is a graduate assistant for us. So we've got two new staff members, uh, one of which obviously I've known pretty well. I, I was an assistant coach when we recruited Sundance. So I've known him since he was 17 years old, living on 426 Force Road out in Gillette, Wyoming. I think we wrote a lot of handwritten letters to that address, if I remember right. Um, and, and then also, we, we've got our mainstay, and Brad Christensen is going to be helping us out. Brad was uh, helping us out when I was a junior, and that's a lot of hairs ago for me. Uh, it's 25 years ago, to be exact. Uh, I did say hairs. I, as you can see, I don't have as much as I did then. But... Uh, uh, then we, we, we have some consistency with uh, Michael Cooper as a student assistant, was here last year, does a fantastic job with our guys. And then um, we've got another assistant, uh, student assistant, Blake uh, Whitlock, who is joining our team, uh, who also, I think, races dirt track. So uh, Blake's bringing some new experience to our staff as well. But uh, a key guy with our staff uh, who's here is Dylan Fritz and his strength and conditioning staff. I uh, really love what he's doing with our, with our players, and I think a lot of coaches feel the same way. Puts a lot of time in. Uh, not a lot gets dropped through the, the hole with him. And uh, I know that it was noticeable 
uh, with how many student athletes stuck around last summer to work in our weight room. And I know he can't work necessarily directly with them in the summer, um, but there is an impact there and accountability, and, and I, I'm really excited about what he's doing in there. So, But first off, before we talk about the season, I am going to introduce our guys. we got Michael Schreiber here, who's a senior, uh, Mac Arvidsson, who's a senior. Uh, I don't quite know what Darren Paterka is called yet. Uh, and we'll talk about that in here in a little bit. But then also DJ Pollard, uh, who's a junior. So we're going to have, have these guys come up and say a few words, starting with uh, Michael first. I'm Michael Schreiber. I'm a senior this year. I'll be graduating with a management degree, and I'm hoping I can get into supply chain management. Uh, our season really hits the road running here in the next two weeks. Uh, tomorrow we actually have a scrimmage against Black Hills State. And then next Wednesday we leave for Oklahoma City where we're going to play Southern Nazarene and uh, Harding University, which will give us a great look right off the bat. And then as was stated before, we'll have a home game against Southwest on November 15th. Um, we have a great team this year, got a great incoming freshman class, bring a lot of athletic ability and give us some great looks in practice. Uh, we got two transfers, Logan Doyle and Johnny Dahl. We give us some great time on the floor. Um, and as for myself, I'm dealing with mono for the fourth time. I don't know how that happens. I wish I could tell you, but as it stands, I got to take my time, uh, really look out for my future health and just make sure I get back to 100% full health before I hit the floor again. So as a timetable, that's looking more towards end of November, early December. But I love this team, I love this community, and I'm going to see this to the end either way. Thank you. Uh, Matt Garbertson from Grand Forks, North Dakota. I'm a senior. Uh, my undergrad is sports marketing and administration, and I actually finished up that bad boy in the summer and graduated in August. So I started grad school this fall, which is a little different kind of a change, but it's a good thing. So I have some classes with Coach Horseman, and he's always coming to me for help on his homework, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> uh, practice so far is going well. Guys are battling hard, and we're getting better every day in certain aspects. Um, so we had one scrimmage against Dakota Westland, uh, we saw some things we needed to improve on, and we're working on that now. Um, but overall, that went all right. Uh, like Shriver said, we have another scrimmage tomorrow against Black Hills, and we're just looking to come out and be a little better than we were uh, last time and just play well. Um, game week starts next week, and we're all really excited about that. Um, a little hit on our Costa Rica practices we had this summer. I think that was a good thing, and we got some young guys acclimated to what's going to happen here. And personally, I would say I was able to get my legs underneath me a little quicker than what uh, I'm used to on a normal year. Uh, season outlook, really excited about the talent that we have here um, and excited about the things that we can accomplish. Uh, my expectations really couldn't be higher. Um, I feel that we were very capable of doing some special things. And that's kind of the talk with all the guys in the locker room. It's just kind of a matter of going out and doing it. Uh, working hard and sacrificing what we need to do to reach our goals. Uh, some important things that we need to do better than last year that I think Coach will probably hit on is um, holding our opponents to lower field goal per percentage um, and limiting them to uh, one shot and just cutting down on the second chance points for them. Um, so we just got to go out and compete every day, be the best that we can, and then we'll be successful, I think. Any questions? Thanks. Hello, I am Darren Paterka from Miller, South Dakota. I am a fifth year junior, I guess you can say. Uh, I got a double, uh, double major in finance and management. Uh, I tore my ACL this summer, so I'll be redshirting, medical redshirt this year. But uh, I'm looking forward to being a student of the game still, uh, being there for the guys, help, help out as much as I can. And I, I got high expectations for them as well. That's all I got for you. Uh, I'm DJ Pollard. I'm a fourth year junior. <clears throat> Didn't know I was speaking, so I'm kind of <laughs> going on the fly here. Um, 
As for uh, the season outlook, I have pretty high expectations. We do every year, but um, I think this year we really have a good focus. And uh, we had a good preseason and good summer. A lot of guys stayed, so we had roughly about 10 guys stay this summer. So we had we could always do open gym, always could run fives, um, had a lot of time lifting. So um, I think that's been really beneficial. It's kind of uh, allowed us to get acclimated with each other, understand how we, how we play with each other. Um, I'm also a biology major, I didn't say that at the start. But uh, as for stuff that these three didn't hit on, I guess defensive uh, emphasis is kind of the main thing we're focusing on this year. Um, field goal percentage, just there was a lot of games last year, at least two that I can think of that the scores were in the 100s where we lost. One was Mankato, which was a double overtime game. And one was Southwest, which was our third game of the year, which was I think 111 to 105. And uh, a big this like a big emphasis, especially with Coach Sundance coming in, is defense, um, energy, because um, the offense isn't really going to be a problem this year. So uh, I think everything else has been really hit on. So that's all I really have to say. It's uh, it's a lot of fun coming to work every day, you know, with these guys and our staff. Um, and you can see it; you get a chance to just listen to them for a few minutes and. Really quality young people, and uh, so you know it, it is exciting. You know we we got picked preseason seventh in the league, and I think a little bit has to do with some injuries and some some changes. You know that happened and occurred this summer. And you know I'll be the first one to say it. I don't believe that for a second. We're not a seventh place team, but nobody really cares besides us when it comes to that. I mean we we know it. We know what we're doing every day, and I think. Uh, we're excited about what we have, and, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I, I, practices have been going really well. Um, you know, you, you lose, you lose uh, Shribes. Uh, right now, we don't have him practice. His example every day is tremendous, and so other guys have had, had to step up. He's a guy that doesn't make a lot of mistakes with what it is we're doing. Um, he's been fighting this mono for, for three years, basically, and, and it's affected his conditioning, his ability to lift and work the way he's wanted to. Uh, and so we'll progress him slowly when, when we can, but we more than likely won't have him available game-wise until sometime after Christmas, if that. Um, you know, we, we got to look at a worst-case scenario. A guy like Darren, who was 14 and a half points, six rebounds, <clears throat> let's see, 131 assists last year. Him and DJ usually guarded the best two players on the floor, no matter where they were. I think he, him and DJ both held Jansen to a season low last year from Augustana. Um, you know, it is another hole, but I tell you what, the addition of a guy like Ian Smith uh, helps fill that hole pretty quick. Uh, but it, it, it hurts your depth a little bit, is what it does. Um, but, and also a spot along with that is a guy like Mac Arvidson, who finally coming off, what, last October when your back finally got healthy, uh, had a healthy season, a healthy postseason, a healthy summer, preseason and going into a season, which he hasn't had for a few years with feet and back. And it, it's really noticeable what we're seeing in practice for Mac. Uh, I, it really is. He, he is uh, taking the bull by the horns, and he is really playing well. So we're excited about uh, what he's bringing. And I think, again, it fills, it fills a little bit of that gap when we lose a guy like Darren. And, and uh, obviously, DJ, DJ can do a lot for us. We'll play him. I think last year, at one point, we played him anywhere from a point guard to a four-man. Uh, defending all four spots and uh, even all five spots at times and, uh, and, and does a tremendous job defensively uh, but, but is a guy that also has worked so many, put so many hours in working on a shot and it's fun to see that work pay off and, and what he's doing in practice. So, you know, the guys that are here, I really you feel great about uh, the heart and soul of our team and, and now it's about, you know, developing some young guys. <clears throat> Practice-wise, and, and these guys hit on it, last year we, we left, there's, there's six games that we left on a table. And they're growing, they're, they're games you learn from. And you, you win 18 games, and we, we really had an opportunity to get to a regional last year. And uh, we were the ones that kind of controlled that and didn't take care of business. And what's fun about it is I think there's a lot of pride in changing that. And so, I mean, I, we have a very much more of a defensive mindset coming in to start. Uh, DJ talked about, you know, he's not too concerned about offense. It's great to have that kind of confidence, and that's the kind of confidence we do have offensively, uh, is we don't get a lot of concern about our offense. 
and and uh, we need to keep that concern defensively too that we know what's, what we're going to be every night night in night out um, you know right now we're, we're really working on uh, that defensive conscience we're really working on uh, the, re the rebound mentality uh, and, and, I, and I think this this group I know this group you, you add someone in the lineup like Ian Smith at only 5'9 or 5'10 is a tremendous rebounder uh, but then you you also add in the mix Logan Doyle uh, who, who's a South Dakota State transfer that we recruited him really hard out of high school. He will help us rebounding, uh, you know, without – he absolutely will help us. So, and he also brings some honoriness and some toughness that way that he goes and pursues balls, which will, which will really help us. Um, working on a rotation, our depth. You, you have situations that happen this uh, – where we've got some changes and some injuries that took place. We've got to develop our bench. We've got six guys returning that have, all, that have all played a lot of minutes that are ready to play right now. And so you're developing that seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth guy, uh, and we've got you know we, we've got some guys to do that with, but some of them are going to be some young new people that we're going to really count on. Um, so that's going to be you know it's it's obviously something we're going to have to continue to work on and, and figure out, and then it's getting consistency so we know what we're going to get night in night out from nine to ten guys every night. Um, Coach Fred talked about the, the schedule. Uh, we open up at. In Oklahoma City at Southern Nazarene, we play them. Um, they got a lot of people back from their team last year that won 18 games, so they'll be a very good opponent. Uh, then we'll also play Harding University that next day. Harding made the regional tournament last year, played Augustana in the first round. Uh, very good coach, and, and they lost some experienced guys, but I know he's got some transfers and some young guys and some guys that were waiting last year to play that <laughs> will really help them. Uh, we do come home that night that Coach Fred talked about. We'll play Southwest Minnesota State um, for the third time in a non-league game. And that's been a wild, both games have been overtime games. One here that we won two years ago and one there that we lost in overtime. And uh, so it's, it's been a fun addition to play that game. Instead of driving all the way down to a place in Missouri or that, that won't want to ever return a game up here, uh, we, we found a common opponent and great rivalry in, 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 in Coach Bigler's team that, you know, that we hope to keep this going. I think it's been a good game. We'll also, the, that next weekend on the 18th and 19th, we'll play at Shadron State, which is coached by former Northern Wolf uh, Houston Reed. Just took that job, and they will be a very different team than what we saw here. Uh, he, he's going to. He's definitely going to get them going a little bit. So they'll have a little bit of energy, effort, and enthusiasm in what they do. And then we go to Black Hill State, which is going to be a little bittersweet for, for me <laughs> because it's where I spent my first five years as a head coach. And Coach Trumbauer is their coach. He was a GA here for Coach Olson when I was Coach Olson's assistant. So uh, it's going to be fun going back there and playing. Jeff's doing a terrific job, and those will be very good road games for us. We come back, and we'll have one last uh, non-league game in Mayville who was coached by Dan DeWitt, who played here and was a very good player. Um, and then we'll start up our league play, which, you know, is going to be, it's going to be interesting. Uh, our league is, you look at it, I think Mankato went up and beat North Dakota State by 12 or 14 in the scrimmage. They're, they're really loaded with heavy Division I transfers and some very good young players. Uh, they'll be very good. You know, I think, I think teams like Augustana are going to surprise a lot of people uh, because I know they lost a lot. Uh, but I think these guys will tell you the, the guys that kind of played a different role for them have the ability to play a much larger role, and I think we'll see that this year. So I think they're a team that's going to be obviously very difficult to play um, and compete. You know, Moorhead's been so good. Uh, they've lost some, but they've still got a lot back. Uh, I think a team like Sioux Falls could really surprise a lot of folks if they could stay healthy. They don't have a lot of depth, um, but if they could stay healthy, I think they're a team that can really compete. Um, you know, a, a Winona, a, a Southwest, a St. Cloud, who has everybody back, are all teams, you know, and this is where we're preseason seventh. And it's kind of this mix that we need to be fighting for to get ourselves up. Obviously, winning a North title uh, is a goal of ours. Uh, winning a conference tournament championship is a goal of ours, and getting to a regional tournament would be a goal of ours. But, you know, the, the, the overriding purpose for us is try to get better every day. Uh, if you get caught up in a win or a loss, uh, you're usually going to get you're usually going to get stunted on what the heck you're trying to do and grow as. So we're just trying to get better. We're going to try to work hard, and it's our job as a staff that we do get better defensively. It is our job as a staff that we do become a better rebounding team, 
uh, because we've got to set that, those expectations high uh, and higher than, w than what we've had in the past. Um, I, it's, it's a great league. We're, we're really excited. There's a lot of teams, I think, in this league that can beat anybody. And even some of the teams that might finish lower uh, have a lot of good young players that are, that are trying to develop and kind of restart their program a little bit. Duluth's a great example of that. Um, so, you know, it's a 22-game season in the league, and that's a grind. And a lot of things happen in a 22-game league season. And uh, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not big up for predict pred predictions. Uh, like I said, we just want to keep getting better. Uh, from a player standpoint, I, I talked about these guys, some new faces, but, but also some returning guys. Uh, we talked about Darren with his knee injury. He'll be back next year, but will give us great support this year. Uh, working with, especially getting, getting in our young guys' ears and, and keep helping them. You know, a lot was uh, what, what Miss, Miss Tappy is going to be doing for her squad this year. Um, Ian Smith has emerged as a guy that I, I think can really be impactful. Uh, we saw him last year when, when Sky got sick in our, in our first round game against Southwest State. I think he had 18 points, four or five assists, six or seven rebounds in that game uh, in, in only about 23 or 24 minutes. So he's definitely a guy we expect to be impactful. Uh, Bo Fries, who was going to redshirt last year, emerges as a guy that started 20-something games and played a lot of minutes. And we'll play him anywhere from a four-man to a three. Um, uh, Justin Decker, who was averaging seven points a game last year because we had some big guy injuries last year, uh, he played the five a lot and was averaging seven when he went down. And uh, we'll have him back, and we'll have him playing a lot of four, four and five. I, it helps us to have some versatility where we can go big and small, and uh, that's definitely something we'll take advantage of uh, without question. Um, another junior who's not here today is Carter Evans and Logan Doyle. Uh, both of our fives, along with Shribes. Uh, and, and Carter's 6'10", he's 260 pounds. He, Hank Clean's 295 pounds. He's a physical freak, and he's a tremendous passer. We're trying to make him a little bit less of a passer and a little bit more of a scorer mentality, uh, and he's working at it. And, but I, I do think he can physically be a guy that dominates games. When, when we lost to Winona, he was the best player on the floor. And if we can build that consistency that he had in that game, and kind of as he finished the season, he's a 63% field goal guy. And we need him to be a guy that's, that's putting up some big numbers for us. And then you, 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 you put another guy in there like Logan Doyle, who, who is a 6'8", 6'9", 230-pound guy. I think we've got some depth there at the five, along with Decker and along with Shribes when he gets healthy. Um, you get into our freshmen. Uh, we redshirted some guys last year. We redshirted Braden McNary, Braxton Elliott, Logan Legrand. Uh, we got some new freshmen in Cole Dahl, Gabe King. Uh, we will more than likely redshirt Ethan Cranholt and Reese Logan for sure. And then a guy like Johnny Dahl who transferred from Stephen F. Austin is a freshman. I think we got him as a junior on our roster on our website. But we can move him to a freshman, uh, a really good-looking freshman. He's strong, physical guard, uh, will not be eligible until after Christmas. There's some credit stuff that, that he's getting fixed, and uh, we'll get him. But, uh, you know, I, I really feel like guys like Cole and Gabe are two true freshmen that could have an opportunity to come in and really help us. Two athletic kids that are big, long, lanky guys that are athletic. Um, so we're going to be looking for, for them to, uh, to help as well. So, you know, it's a little bit about our team. I, I, I really, with, the, with some of the things that have happened, um, I'm telling you, the support we get, from fans, but, but the people that uh, donate their money uh, to our institution, to our athletic department, uh, it's allowed us to have some depth. We got some depth, and I'm really excited about our depth, and I'm excited about what this team is capable of. I, we're, we're a more athletic team than we were last year, even with some guys out and gone. And uh, uh, offensively, they're pretty confident. If we can come out and defend the way we're capable of, um, I, I tell you what, I think we, we can set that ceiling pretty high. So we're excited about that. Just checking to see if I forgot anything else. Any questions at all? Yes, sir. It's not really a question. It's more of a comment. Between uh, you, the men's and the women's teams, you guys are the flagship of the area. You do a great job. You're uh, a blessing to the community, and the community really appreciates all you do. Yeah. You're well, a great athlete. Thanks, Carl, and you're a blessing to our arena because you don't ever miss anything, right? 
you don't even miss our high school classics that we have here when the first game starts at 10 o'clock and it's, you know. But I'll say this, and, and I mean this, it, it's, this is such a tremendous place to work um, because I got, you know, we got coaches in the back here from volleyball and soccer. Uh, we got some football guys in here. Um, it's, it's fun walking around and getting to know these students, athletes in every sport. We, we got our, our GPA as a department is, I think, a 3.3. We got so many student, quality student athletes here, and, and it just says so much about the kind of coaches we have and the kind of people they are and the kind of character that they bring in. And uh, it, it, it honestly makes coming to work every day a lot of fun. It's, it's just not about our team. Uh, it, it is. I think when you're, when you're a Northern State person, um, it is. It's, it's, a, it's a community effort. It's a community feel. And uh, our support in this community, as you guys all know, is – it's no one else gets this and we're, we're pretty fortunate as coaches and student athletes and as a community to have this kind of support. So we appreciate that. Thanks. Yes, sir. Kurt, my nephew. Kurt. I thought maybe you guys were cousins. Yeah. And of course, I've been watching them for years and then down south in Mesa, I go, we watch them on the internet. And last year, my brother and I was watching them and so after the game, I called Kurt up. Yeah. And I said, Kurt, you got to calm down. I said, you're so loud, we can hear you in Mesa. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I tell you, he's got a little bark to him, but he's, it's a little more bark than bite most times, I think as girls will say. The radio announcer quits talking when I start yelling. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments for that matter? All right, thanks. We're excited.